The year was 1962 when a young man of 25 entered the offices of the National Radio and Electronics Company Limited at Antheri in Mumbai. Nine years later, he was the director in charge of the company and a decade later, the chairman of Tata Industries. In 1991, he succeeded GRD Tata as the chairman of the Tata Group. The youth was Ratan Tata, fresh out of Cornell University, armed with a bachelor's degree in architecture, more than ready to enter and learn as he would rise from the lowest rungs in one of India's most hallowed industrial houses. Today, Tata's contribution to India's largest conglomerate and to the nation's economy has been second to none. He was on a pedestal very few industrialists in the country were able to climb. Though he had a magic surname, young Ratan had a tough act to follow, that of his predecessor Jamsechi Tata, Dorab Tata and finally the iconic GRD. Ratan Tata took on the challenge and by the time he retired in December 2012, Tata Group's financials spoke loud about the impact he had. During his tenure, the group revenues grew manifold, totaling over 100 billion US dollars in 2011-2012. Ratan Tata identified the opportunity which the liberalization of the Indian economy provided and began restructuring the Tata Group in 1991. Under his leadership, the group acquired high-profile international brands like Tetley Tea, Daewoo, Soros Steel, Jaguar Land Rover. He was also the man behind Tata Nano, the company's small car project, which he hoped would give wheels to the middle class. The journey, however, was not easy and tested his mettle at every turn. First, he had to deal with the Sardaps, a legacy left by his uncle, G.R.D. Tata. Rusi Modi lorded over Tata Steel. Darbari Seth was the final voice at Tata Tea and Tata Chemicals. Ajit Kerkar was the force behind Indian hotels and Nani Palkiwala was the man behind ACC. Each considered these companies their fiefdoms and looked at Ratan Tata as another outsider they had to deal with. Six years after taking over as the Tata Group chairman, all four of them resigned. Tata also wielded the broom on several companies. He exited cement, textiles, cosmetics and focused his energy on software, telecom, finance and retail. Finally, after serving as the group chairman for 21 years, Tata retired in December 2012. He had spent 50 illustrious years with the Tata group. An avid aviator, Tata was awarded the Padma Vibhushan, the country's highest civilian honour by the Government of India in 2008. The humble industrialist was also known for his philanthropic work. Till his death, he served as the chairman of the Tata Trust, which is amongst India's oldest non-sectarian philanthropic organisations that work in several areas of community development. The proudest moment for him, perhaps in recent years, was bringing Air India back home to the Tata fold. And while he aimed to touch the skies, his other love was dogs. Doors of even the Bombay house were open to strays all day long.